So let's say we've been canoeing all day on Musluk Lake, and we've run across an emergency, and we've already gone in touch with emergency services, and they're going to meet us at the crossroads of the roads right here. We have docked our canoes at the dam site, and now we need to figure out how to get from the dam to the crossroads. Because there are no trails, we're going to have to cut across the land and get a bearing of travel. To do that, you're going to need to use your map and compass in a very simple procedure. What you're going to want to do is line up the point to the point. Now you see these red lines in the middle of the compass. You see these longitude lines here. What you want to do is you want to line up your red line with longitude line. So you can see we are connected to the point, to the point, and our red line is on the longitude line. It's not linked up, and now it is. Okay. So looking at our compass, we can see the little white mark right there. That tells us that we are at 17 degrees true north. Now we need to convert that into magnetic north to get our travel bearing. Here in Maine, to go from map to magnetic north, you have to add 15 degrees. So 17 degrees becomes 32. So now we know that when we are traveling, we need to be going that direction, just like that. Simple. Next, we need to know the distance, how far we need to travel. There's two methods. The quick and dirty method isn't precise, but it gets you a close enough number. So you mark off the two distances using a string. You always have a string on your compass. It's the easiest and works. Then you come down over here to your legend. And we get about two and a half miles. But that is very approximate. To get a more detailed and precise number, any good compass will have a ruler edge on it. So then you can distinctly measure from the point to the point, which gets us at about one and one eighth. Then we know that one inch is equal to two miles. So that means that we take the one and one eighth inch and multiply it by two to get 2.25 miles. So we know we need to travel 2.25 miles from the dam to the road. Now, assuming that you already know your pace count, you can, when you're walking it, you can count your paces and know your distance. Also, in addition to being able to count the distance, you can look at landmarks and the features of the land and use that to trace your path for it. You see that initially we're going to be going through a, a marshy area. You can see the little marsh symbols. You can see that we're going to be crossing a river. You can see that we're going to be crossing a dirt road. Most likely it's going to be a logging road. And finally, we get to the road itself. It's likely that we're going to hit the road down here somewhere just because it juts out. And so when we hit the road, we know we can just go north. If for some reason we are over here, then we know that there's no northern road. And so we just travel east. We also notice that on the other side of the road is Bartlett Mountain. We can see the contour lines going up rapidly on the far side of the road. So we know that if we hit the hit high contour lines as we're traveling, we've probably gone too far. We need to stop and reorient ourselves.